Hey, if you just failed your first microeconomics midterm, there's two things that I make sure you know to not fall behind. The profit maximizing point with marginal analysis and supply and demand shifters. Hey, and before we get started, if you want me to explain your entire microeconomics class to you in around two hours, go check out my microeconomics cram kit. I've mapped out all 95 core concepts, even outside of this midterm that you need to know. And I've got a video explaining them each in around a minute. All right, let's start here with the profit maximizing point with marginal analysis. This is going to apply again later in the semester when we're working with marginal revenue and marginal cost. This probably looks familiar right here where your professor mapped out these three scenarios and whether or not you should consume an additional unit. Typically it's like a pizza or a chocolate bar. You'll consume the next unit if your marginal benefit, your additional benefit outweighs your marginal cost. And this will be your last unit here where your marginal benefit equals your marginal cost. Because that's the number of units at which you're basically breaking even on on your benefit and costs. And then once your additional benefit from consuming units is less than the additional cost, you're not gonna consume those units and should stop. That whole process right there will be reflected again later in the semester with marginal revenue and marginal cost. It is quite literally the same exact like principle, same exact concept. It's just now we're working with additional revenue that a firm can generate by selling one more unit to the market. You also might see this again even later in the semester towards final if you're working with labor markets or factor markets, except then it'll be marginal revenue product, marginal benefit, and marginal resource cost, marginal cost. All right, I'm gonna make this next part super quick. You probably have seen the supply and demand curves like this, and you probably, I'm gonna assume you know how to find equilibrium. What I wanna focus on with you is knowing what direction to shift the supply or demand curves depending on if the problem is saying there's an increase or decrease to them. Always frame increases and decreases in supply or demand as as right or leftward shifts. Do not connotate them with up or down because you'll mess it up with supply in particular. And I'll show you why right here. Let's say the problem says supply increases. I'm gonna write that to the right of the supply curve. This is the right answer right here, but if you look at it, it looks like you're shifting it down. Don't make that mistake. You're actually increasing supply here to S2 because we're shifting the curve right. And full visibility right here, equilibrium would now occur right there. Let's do it once again real quick with demand. Let's say the problem says demand decreases decreases. Well, I'd write that like this because I'm shifting demand to the left. And let's say we're using our new supply curve as well. Well, now our equilibrium point would occur right there. You're going to be shifting the supply curve a lot um, later on the semester when we run into taxes as well as quotas in international trade. All right, that's honestly like about it for in terms of what I'd make sure you know if you failed your first midterm. Yes, there are other things in that first midterm you took that are important, but 